Today, we will discuss the following topics. The target audience for this presentation, the prerequisites to implement the XDR collectors, the key features. We will see a log collection use case. We will see how the XDR collectors are installed and uninstalled. We will review the collector's configuration. We will have a look at the data sets. We will review the key takeaways. And finally, we will have a demo as a practical way of understanding better XDR collectors implementation. The target audience for this presentation are organizations that have a large amount of different log sources that need to be managed and integrated in their cyber defense incident response toolset. As prerequisites, we need to have a Cortex XDR Pro per terabyte license because we will need Cortex data lake to store our logs. As key features, we have the following. We can retrieve logs from virtually any device or application that can store logs in a file. Our XDR collector agent is independent of the XDR agent and its management is very simple. Cortex XDR collectors are developed so far for Windows and almost any kind of Linux. And we don't support Mac OS or Android yet. The running agent is a compiled Python executable, so no need to install Python on the operating system. XDR collector agent will provide its own managed file bit instance, which will be transparent to the users. Let's see a log collection use case. Imagine an organization that runs many different applications in a variety of different Linux distributions like Red Hat, Debian, or any other. And they want to integrate the logs of all these applications, each of them with a different log format. As an example, operating system logs, IP tables, different web servers, and as we said before, any kind of device or application that can store logs in a file. Once the logs are integrated into the XDR tenant, you can parse the logs, analyze them, stitch and correlate with other log sources, perform post-mortem log searches and many other operations on them. To create the agent installer, we click on the code wheel, then configurations, and under XDR collectors, we go to installers, and then click on create. We will fill out the required fields as name of our collector agent installer, an optional description. Then we select the operating system and also the agent version. When we select Linux as operating system, later on, we will have the possibility to download an agent installer with extensions .rpm, .deb, or .sh. When we select Windows as operating system, we will be able to download a .msi installer. And finally, we click on create. To configure our collector, we click on the cogwheel settings, then on configurations, and under XDR collectors, we click on configuration. Here we can configure the maximum number of parallel agents upgrades. By default, it's 500, which is also the maximum amount allowed. Then we specify the days in week, and we can also configure the scheduled hour for the upgrades to happen. To install the agent in Linux, we run the following commands, always as root rpm-i for Red Hat Family Linux and dpkg-i for Debian-based Linux family. And in both cases, the name of the installer we have generated before. Additionally, we can also run an installation script, for example, a .sh installer. To install the agent on Windows, we execute a admin in a PowerShell console the previously generated .msi installer. This way, we will install all components required for the agent to collect the logs, including a file bit instance that will be totally managed by the XDR collector agent. We will just need to provide a few parameters to let it know the logs we want to collect. To uninstall the collector, it is highly recommended to do so from the tenant console. Additionally, in Windows, we can uninstall it running the installer.msi with the slash x option and with the standard way of uninstalling any other application in Windows, which is from the control panel and going to uninstall software. To let the collector know where to look for the logs to be retrieved and sent to the tenant, we should provide some paths and log types to be read by the agent. These log files will be actually sent to the Cortex data lake to be integrated at Cortex. So as an example, we will add these config lines at the bottom of the collector profile. From the administration option on the menu, we can View the collector status, 
the version. The last time it was seen by the tenant, policy, file bit status, and file bit version. The agent status can be connected or disconnected. And the file bit status can be active, inactive, unavailable, or unknown. Right-clicking on our collector, we can change the collector alias, upgrade the version of our collector, set a proxy for the collector, and to a maximum to 10 proxies, and install the collector. We can retrieve the support files that we can later download from the Action Center, and we can also view the audit logs. If we go to the Groups option, we can create a static groups by selecting individual endpoints or dynamic groups by setting up selection filters to decide which endpoints should be included in our group. At the installer option, we can create the agent installers, edit them, delete, download the installers by clicking on them, and we can copy text and show or hide rows. At the profiles option, we can create the profiles that we can apply later on on our endpoints using the policies that will connect our endpoints with the profiles. We can also see the collector upgrade, the file with config file, and download examples of config files. In this slide, we can see an example of the collector profile with all the information about the collector, including the file with YAML file at the bottom of the page. Here we can see the paths and log files that the collector will read and retrieve from the endpoint. In Windows, we see that the service display name will be XDR Collector. For the command line, it will be XDR Collector SVC. And the process name is XDR Collector SVC.exe, while the filebit process is filebit.exe. In Linux, we can check the process name of the XDR agent and the filebit instance with the command ps and grep for XDR and filebit respectively. In the images, we see the output of such commands. Please note that in the case of the XDR processes, we see two of them. One process is the configuration and working parameters of XDR. The other one is the actual agent process. This is the way how precompiled Python executables work. Let's see some important files. The folder where the collector stores its logs is slash opt slash Palo Alto Networks slash XDR dash collector slash logs. This is for the case of Linux. And for Windows is C, program data, XDR collector, logs. Then we can find the scatter.log file, which contains all agent operations. So it will also store the errors and exceptions that might occur. So this file is very, very important for troubleshooting. On Linux, the agent configuration is stored under etc, panw, and on Windows, under program data, XDR collector. Let's go for the data sets. All that are received from the XDR collector will be immediately stored at the tenant in a dataset called log underscore log underscore row. You can SQL query this dataset to make sure that your logs are getting to the tenant. We will see this later on at the demo. We will end this presentation reviewing the main takeaways, which are the following. XDR collectors can retrieve and integrate virtually any kind of log that can be read from a file into the XDR tenant. Once the logs are stored at the Cortex data lake, we can operate with them as with any other logs creating dashboards, save widgets, SQL searches, etc. XDR collector agent, which is independent from the XDR agent, is much simpler to maintain and manage. And the SDR collector will install and manage its own file bit instance. Okay, now that we're done with the slides, let's go for the demo. First, we will create the Cortex XDR collector and agent installer. To do so, we will click on the Cogwheel settings, configurations, then we go to XDR collectors, installers. Now we will click on create. And here we will give a descriptive name for our SDR installer. Additionally, we can give also a description. It is optional. Then we select the platform. In our case, it's going to be Linux and the version of the installer. In this case, I'm going to select the latest agent version and then we click on create. We will see that our installer appears as in progress. In just a few moments, it will be completed and we will be able to download it. Once it is completed, we will right-click on it and we will download the specific installer that we need, which in my case is an RPM package for a CentOS Linux distribution. Once the installer is downloaded, you need to copy it into the endpoint where you want to sense the logs from. You can use a USB, a network share, or any other method that you prefer. 
The next thing we will do is to configure our collectors upgrade. In this case, we will go to XDR collectors and then configuration. Here, you will see that the amount of parallel upgrades is 500 by default, which is also the maximum. You can select also the day in week you want the upgrade to happen. And also you can schedule the time. Once you're done, you click on save. After you saved it, the next thing we can do is to admin our collectors. We can just right click on it and we can change the collector alias, upgrade the collector version. If we didn't select the automatic upgrades, for example, we can force it from here. We can set the collector proxy in case we need it. We can uninstall the collector. We can delete the collector. We can retreat support files for this collector. We can view the collector policy. We can view the audit logs for this collector, or we can copy the text of the specified cell on the clipboard but also show just the rows that contain the same value of the cell that I was right clicking on. Let's move on to the next option, which is groups. Here in groups, we can add a group that can be a static or dynamic. We can select the name, the description, and then if we want a static group, we will just click and select endpoint by endpoint. And we will see that automatically this button turns into a static group. Additionally, you can create a dynamic group just selecting a field and then the condition contains, for example, and the value could be like TWiki. In this case, we are selecting just the endpoint, which name is TWiki, and this will turn onto dynamic group. Now we will go to see the profiles option. Here in profile, we can create profiles for Windows or for Linux. We click on new profile, and in our case, let's do it for Linux. We add a name here, a description here, we can configure the way we want to upgrade the agent. For example, by default is disabled. If we enable it, we will see that by default is the latest collector release. But we can select the only maintenance releases, the only maintenance releases in a specific version. This is very similar to the regular Cortex XDR agents. Okay. The next thing and last thing we can do in this area is to configure the file bit for retrieving the files. We have two links. One is to download the module configurations file example, and the other one, the file boot input. Basically, we can click on here, download the example files, and then we can paste the content here. Here, we are indicating the type of logs we want to retrieve. We enable them, and then we tell the collector where is the path where the log is located. Once we create it, this configuration file will be transferred to the agent and so to the endpoint. So here we can modify as we wish, for example, var log, which is a common collection of logs for Linux system. can also add here the audit logs as an example. And we can even add more types of logs. We then click on save and there we go. And we can configure the policies which is the tool that allows us to connect the profiles with the endpoints. We can create a new policy. Policy name could be Henry's for web me for webinar platform. We say Linux. My pro policy for webinar. And then we can also, for example, the Elvis Linux profile or Elvis profile, which is the one that I've just created. In this way, we have connected, for example, these two endpoints with the profile we have just created through the policy. We click on them. Perfect. It's done. And now, of course, we will save it. So now that we have our agent installer copied into the endpoint, we will see how to install it.
this is our agent installer. So we will, as super user or root, we will rpm install. It should be quite fast. There we go. Now we can check that this is running. The XDR collector process is already running. And there we go. It is running. Another thing we can do, we are going to check also that the file bit instance that XDR collector will install and maintain and manage by itself is also running. This is something that I mentioned in the in the slides. And there it is. So we have already XDR collector running and file bit running. Now I'd like to make a test in order to see how the logs are going to be sent and injected. I'm going to generate some logs with a script that I've done by myself that will create logs on the paths that uh, Filebit and XDR Collector are going to check and those logs will be sent to the tenant and so we will be able to, to see some logs there. Of course, I need to run this as sysadmin or root. Okay, now we're going to make sure that the logs got to the tenant. So we're going to log, log more, then Logs. contains and we saw that this was the chain that was generated by my logs so we're going to run it whenever that we are using XDR collectors, the data set where the logs will be stored will be log underscore log underscore raw. We are checking that the raw log contains the chain that I was injecting on my script. And here are the results. We can check that the logs are actually here. We see them over here. So yes, this worked and everything is fine. Collector name, the log files, the folder, the timestamps, all good. So just a bit of review that we were uh, XDR collectors, if we go to the profiles, 
we'll see that the profile we were using for Linux, which is this one, we can edit it. And it was looking at the logs. Okay, so I hope this has been informative and thanks for watching.